the heart, may it go again to the heart. Beethoven inscribed these words on the manuscript of his mighty Missa Solemnis. This work was one of the largest and latest works of the composer who said, it is one of my greatest achievements. It took him several years to write this monumental piece. During that time, the aging composer was deaf, getting more and more eccentric and withdrawing from society. Why write a mass? Beethoven was born Catholic, but he did not really believe in the church as an institution. During that time, his friend and patron, the Archduke Rudolf, was about to get a promotion to the post of Archbishop. So this was the perfect opportunity for Beethoven to show his affection to his friend, but also write a great piece that could perhaps land him a great future job posting. This piece portrays great text painting. For example, in the opening words of the Kyrie, we hear the choir singing these colossal and majestic blocks of sound representing the power of the deity. But also the great dynamic contrasts takes us also to show humility before God. And this great contrast already sets the tone from the opening words of the work. musical mass as a form is barely enough to hold all the weight of what Beethoven is trying to express. What he does is that he stretches the singers and the orchestra to their limits. He writes all these incredible high notes for the singers. He stretches the orchestra's abilities in terms of technique. All this as a testimony of great expression and belief.
Beethoven was someone deeply spiritual. Though he did not believe in religion as an institution or an organization, actually, he had a small note on his desk that said, I am that which is. I am all what is, what was, what will be. No mortal man has ever lifted my veil. Beethoven tried to sum up 300 years of church music tradition that he combined with his own beliefs of humanism inspired by the Enlightenment. This piece is to him a testimony of extreme spirituality and expression. However, there is a certain theatricality to the piece, and many commentators led to believe that it is more appropriate for the theater than the church. Actually, this piece was premiered in part along with the Ninth Symphony in a theater in Vienna.
happy to be collaborating with USG and Yasmina for the first time. Happy to sing this music, uh, the Mr. Solemnis that Beethoven couldn't hear himself. Uh, Ludwig van Beethoven um, wrote a masterpiece and I think he had a very, very big concept in mind. And um, for us as soloists, uh, for me, it's uh, nice to be part of something bigger. thrilled to, 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 to be a part of it. Um, I'm scared as well because it's really difficult, demanding stamina, concentration. and biographer actually wrote, the result of this obstinacy was that the soloists and member of the chorus made their own simplifications. When they could not reach the high notes as written, the soprano simply did not sing. And in any case, the composer, though he was standing in the midst of the ensemble, could hear nothing that was going on. What is very interesting also is how Beethoven decides to divide his text. It is certainly not equal. He gives, for example, a great importance and a great deal of importance to et homo factus est, and he was made man. This is Beethoven the humanist talking, and he gives a great deal of importance to when he was made man and he came on earth. Credo is the center of the Catholic faith. I believe. He writes this very strong motif for the choir. But then, 
when he's when it's talking about basically the entire affirmation of the Catholic faith, he gives these very quick passages where he just lets the text go so quickly, as if this doesn't really matter, and what really matters is the faith. As a choir member, singing Beethoven's Misa Solemnis was a truly transformative experience. Uh, at first, I approached the piece with curiosity and anticipation, uh, not knowing fully what to expect. I thought it would be like any other classical uh, piece. But uh, as I immersed into uh, its intricacies, as we delved into the different layers with Yasmina, something extraordinary happened and I found myself completely captivated by the beauty of this piece and its complexity.
first thing you experience in the Misa Solemnis really is the, the size of it. It's huge and it's thick. Uh, it's like a tapestry. And uh, singing it, the experience of singing it is like, uh, you know, you're like weaving your voice into the tapestry of sound. And you start to see all the intricate patterns and the repeating motifs. And um, it's also extremely difficult to sing. It's uh, rhythmically complex and you have very rapid changes in a tempo and speed and in dynamics. So it's physically and mentally exhausting, emotionally exhausting. But at the end of the day, you know, you feel the achievement of, of putting together one of the greatest works of classical music ever written. One of my favorite moments of this piece and one of the most magical moments of this piece is the Benedictus, in which he inserts a violin solo, starting from the top range of the instrument, going down step by step as if the Holy Spirit is going down to earth to us. I'm really happy uh, to have encountered this beautiful solo in my life, the solo of uh, the Benedictus which is a very interesting solo after the big, big, big uh, uh, mess of the fugues and, uh, and uh, the challenging part of the Misa. There is this very, very lyrical and peaceful solo of the Benedictus that I will be playing for the first time in my life. This is a, 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 a very, very big solo uh, and a very famous among the pieces for uh, choir and orchestra.
I think Beethoven is amazing. And uh, my favorite part of his score is Agnus Day. And I think he written this part for all our souls. The last movement, Agnus Dei, definitely stands out from the rest. Here he alternates between peace and war. Actually, Beethoven inscribed on that last movement, plea for inner and outer peace, because in order to reach eternal peace, we must pass through struggle. And Beethoven expresses this in the most sublime way. What Beethoven also could not hear was the great applause at the end of the concert. A soprano actually had to come and turn him around for him to see the cheering crowd waving their handkerchiefs.
if I can say one thing about uh, the Misa Solemnis, is that it made me realize and fully grasp why Beethoven is considered one of the greatest composers of all time. Was this piece the quest for faith at the end of his life? Though he was not religious, Beethoven wrote, My primary goal in composing this grand mass was to awaken and permanently instill religious feelings in both the singers and the listeners.